Hello and welcome back and that is right I'm going to talk today about SSD heatings on PS5 I know super cool people right chill out I know this is too interesting but before we go any further I just want to let you guys know as I've mentioned in other videos I'm going to be doing a big giveaway at the end of the year a lot of the stuff that I featured here on the channel is going to be given away in a big draw at the end of this year how do you enter thanks for asking thanks for waiting as well go to the comments below and during the course of this video I am going to mention a Christmas movie at one point. When you spot it, pause the video, because I want you to come back. Go to the comments and bung the name of that movie there in the comments. Again, if you're watching this on Facebook, Twitter, make sure it is Nas Compare's own channel. And then in the comments where it's posted, put the answer uh, whatever the movie is that I have mentioned. At the end of the year, I'm going to go through, co correlate them all together, and then just do a giveaway and give away some items there. It's nice and simple. So, if you want to go for it there, watch out for the movie during the course of the video. Big recommendation for you, by the way. If you did pause and go down there after I said the word comments, just to see someone else put a movie and copy it, it's worth mentioning, some of you are getting it wrong for some reason in other videos, and then people just keep repeating the wrong answer. You're not entered, so my advice would either be to watch it in the video, or at least read a lot more comments to make sure you You've got it right but otherwise let's crack on with today's ranty little video now look i'm a reasonable guy i'm quite chilled i have a cup of tea from time to time maybe even a beer but i've got to say right now there is one subject in the comments that i just keep hitting a wall with with some of the commenters and that is heat sinks I know this isn't the first time I've covered this subject, but it seems to be a minor pedantic point that a lot of people are either not taken seriously or are arguing about for the wrong reasons. Nice and simple, if you have bought a PS5 and you're looking at upgrading the SSD inside, get a heat sink. I've mentioned this in many, many videos. Sick of saying it. And people still seem to want to argue the hill on this one. When the f is it gonna stop? Who the f are you i don't get it it's like listen it's way no way i don't respect as many opinions as possible but unfortunately some of the opinions being thrown about in the comments not just in this video but many other people's channels as well on this subject are being blanketly done wrong something of a scientist myself and in today's video after going through many 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 comments not just this video but some other videos on other platforms i've corrugated them down to five questions that i want to answer basically this is the dissemination of one batch of comments into one single argument people seem to have against heat sinks to which i will respond now so if you are on the verge of upgrading your ps5 with a new ssd i'm going to explain to you why you need to have a heat sink and by the way most of today's points by the way don't just apply to PlayStation 5. The majority of them apply to whether you're a PC user for gaming, for editing. This is basically, if you are using an SSD, an NVMe SSD right now without heatsink, stop using it, get a heatsink and start using it again. But for now, let's crack on. Okay, so right up, I'm properly sick of people moaning about the cost of these things. I get it. It's a bit of an extra cost. You already feel like you've spent, in, you know, in the UK, 450 quid on a PS5. Then you've had to spend a few hundred quid on an SSD. And now you're being stung for a 10, 20, 30 quid more heatsink. Why, you know, you shouldn't have to spend this extra money. It's needless spending. You're being conned. You're not. You are not being conned. Having a heatsink is important. If you're going to spend a lot of money on something, you want it to last. And this tiny little extra bit of money that goes into a heatsink that therefore can keep the lifespan of your SSD running faster as well as improving its performance generally. These two are incredibly important. SSDs are not like hard drives. They don't have moving parts. The way they are built is they are constantly being fed electricity and those chips are being read to. They suffer from something known as um, erosion within data, the erosive data and um, they're, they're measured generally as DWPD, drive rights per day, or TBW, terabytes written. These are figures that dictate how long an SSD will last in terms of data being written to it to its optimal efficiency. Now, you can't stop the data that's been read and, run, read and written to it, but you can dictate the temperature this SSD is going to run at. If you have an SSD you know, that's running in your machine, you, if you want it to last, it will last at its best when it's cool. Hence why a heatsink is going to be optimal. You are not being conned. You are being advised to get something that will en enhance its durability over time, thanks to it being cool. Yeah. 
This one comes up a lot. I'm not suggesting that an SSD isn't going to work at under 70C. 70C, uh, an SSD, um, sorry, uh, 70C um, so Celsius, this drive will run optimally up to 70C. And once it gets to 70C, the control, the little brain on the SSD can start to throttle it. It limits the performance because it's worried it's going to overload itself or overwrite and basically harm itself. And that's what an SSD does. And yes, it can run up to 70C and it won't do that in most cases. Generally, 50 to 70 is considered top end temperature on an SSD. But going back to my earlier point, it's about durability and performance. These SSDs run at their best below 50 okay so yes they'll run higher than that there's no question that it was going to run it's not going to run higher than 50 i'm saying it will run optimally and with durability and longevity in mind within that frame and it will run as best as it can think about a car now you could have a car that goes oh this car runs this car can do 70 to 90 miles an hour fine but you wouldn't drive for 70 to 90 miles an hour constantly would you if you did that you accept in your head that a car that's running 70 to 90 miles an hour constantly is going to degrade more than a car that's running 50 miles an hour constantly so yes i am talking about the concept of the temperature rather than performance and speed but what i'm saying is this ssd will run better and for a longer period of time if you maintain it with a heatsink. Without a heatsink, that temperature is going to get higher much, much quicker, and it will also find it much, much harder to dissipate that heat, to get rid of the heat from the SSD. So even when it's not being fully accessed, the SSD is going to only very slowly get rid of the heat, whereas a heatsink dissipates it a great deal quicker. It removes the heat, it takes the heat away, and then the heatsink's job is to get rid of that air not just relying on an ssd which is just chips on a board to get rid of all of that heat now this one really grinds my gears the idea that your playstation because it's got a fan inside should have all the cooling it needs and sony have already factored in all of the cooling no that fan was designed to keep the system cool, to keep the GPU, the CPU, the memory, and all of those internal components cool. The M2 upgrade slot is a variable. It is something that everyone's going to be using different SSDs. Everyone's going to be using some SSDs that run hotter than others, and people are going to use their own heatsink. You need this heatsink to dissipate that heat. You can't rely on the system fans. You can't say the PlayStation already has internal cooling. Why should I care? No, I'm not having it. It comes down to that heat sink to remove it. I don't want to be a Grinch about this. It's just if you don't remove that heat with a heat sink, that heat is now just living there inside the system, ready to be picked up and ready to be fed into that negative cooling system. So get yourself a heat sink. Now, this one really gets my goat. Yes, Sony didn't include a heatsink with their system. Yes, Sony hasn't recommended any specific heatsink for their system. And yes, there is no first-party heatsink for that system. That doesn't mean you don't need one just because Sony didn't include one. With the heatsink inside that PS5, that heatsink is designed to dissipate that heat from the SSD. It, you know, it is a necessity of SSD just because Sony don't include a feature doesn't mean it doesn't have a place within that system. They clearly made the space for a heatsink. And moreover, I hate seagulls, they also, in their own recommended guides for upgrading the storage, make it abundantly clear you need a heatsink. So people that are telling you if you needed a heatsink, heat, uh, Sony would have included it, are wrong. And this last one makes me so angry, I had to have a bit of a lie down. People that think that the SSD inside the PS5, when you load a game from the title screen and you're in the game, people seem to have this idea that that means the heatsink's done now. It just sits there and puts it. It doesn't. It doesn't. The way gaming architecture works these days, it's not like the old days of, you know, the games load and then the assets are readily available and in the short-term cache or memory. Now, loading is more granular. A lot of games use silent loading, where a character moves through a pre-modeled um, um, movement set where 
elements of the screen are being hidden from the character to see because these assets are being destroyed to free up assets and internal hardware for what's coming soon. A lot of games are open world without loading screens. The only time you see loading screens are when you force in an, an, an inorganic movement such as fast travel within a game or activating or introducing assets on the fly like a cheat code where you might introduce a new asset. You may see a pause as it has to then read and grab stuff there. Games do not front load everything in one go like an old tape cartridge on an Amstrad or something. These days games are loaded granularly all the time consequently you need a heatsink on the ssd because even though you've gone through the loading screen and go up oh, the game's loaded laughing the game's still going to be drawing assets and activity from the ssd and even worse this data is very rarely sequential it's not blob data like when you load a game at the beginning a lot of this is tiny data from AI mechanics within a game to small assets and textures being swapped out from distancing within a game that requires the SSD to be bombarded a great deal quicker in, in a way more commonly known as IOPS, individual input outputs per second. So again, when it comes to SSDs, a heatsink is going to be useful in those instances because the SSDs are constantly getting loaded from. They might not be getting written to that much or at all, but reading from is a near constant activity, and that heating, if you watch my t um, temperature tests, you'll know that a lot of the games, when they're running, even PS4 era games, will still result in the SSD just gradually climbing a little bit in temperature. And whether you use PS5 designed heat sinks like the Sabrent or the Elec Gear, or or you take advantage of first party SSD heatsinks or even if you go nuts and go for high end enterprise pie in the sky heatsinks like the heat pipe cooler regardless on which way you go on this you're gonna end up with a cooler heatsink and in the case of all of these with all of our tests we've shown no detrimental effects to the internal PS5 system so again this is why you need a heat sink. I'm sick of asking it. I'm sick of answering this question, I should say. And I hope you found this video helpful. I'm sorry if it was very petulant, but you do get a bit wound up from time to time. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next video. Click like if you've enjoyed it, subscribe, and the bell to be notified on future videos. We've got some other great storage stuff coming out in 2022 with regards to testing temperature on these ssds as we're seeing a newer generation of drives start to arrive in the market that are just blistering so stay tuned for those but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time